Hey everyone, friends, subscribers, correspondents, this is Volcanoes Go Boom. It's been a little over two months now since I got back from college. Um, I haven't really been doing anything that significant this summer. Just lazing around the house, trying to find a job. Uh, <clears throat> I got a real busy day ahead of me, so I wanted to take this uh, opportunity to do a quick overview of one of my favorite weapons however this time it's definitely not a gun <laughs> it's something entirely different while you all may know me as a firearms enthusiast I really do love the old antique vintage type um, melee and ranged weapons from like ancient times and medieval times and and the exotic ones too from uh, uh, foreign countries like from Southeast Asia and uh, uh, Far East Asia and places like that. And what we have here, this is the infamous Gurkha Kukri knife. The country of origin was Nepal. And as a matter of fact, this knife is a symbol of Nepal's strength and valor and determination when it comes to uh, conflict. And I don't know if I just mentioned this, but uh, also, yeah, their power. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, the Gurkha Kukri. What's really nice about my Kukri knife here is that um, this was actually given to me for free it was a, a birthday present from a really good friend of mine from college last winter. Um, and uh, now, what's really interesting about this friend, my friend Wong, he is native Nepalese, grew up there, speaks the language and everything. Um, his family still practices all their cultural customs and uh, whatnot. In the uh, little town in the southwestern Colorado that I go to their family owns a nice little uh, Himalayan imported shop and while I was uh, browsing around there one day uh, chatting with him told him I saw a few of uh, a few uh, cookeries on display in uh, one of their display stands and asked him about them expressed a lot of interest told him how they are indeed my favorite knife not just knife but as I may have said earlier my favorite melee weapon in general and he said hey I can get you one I can get you one from free for free I um, he actually had a contact over in Nepal that um, made these things and he called it a he said he'd call it a birthday present so that was very sweet of my friend Wong and uh, I love him so much for that and this is a it's a very exciting gift and I've really enjoyed it Okay, so how I acquired this thing, that's enough of that. A uh, <clears throat> bit of history on the cookery. Like I said, this is a very symbolic weapon in Nepalese culture. And as a matter of fact, it's not just viewed as a weapon too. It's also um, a very convenient and very common multi-purpose tool. I mean, well, let's see. Here. A nice uh, display of the knife here. Oh, as you can see there, the blade still has a special uh, oil coating to prevent uh, rust and corrosion. It's got some nice weight to it. But yeah, take a look at that. It's, um, I heard in Nepalese culture, cookeries are very common. Uh, kitchen appliances for chopping potatoes or vegetables and fruits and whatnot. Um, of course slicing up meat and um, I guess in the wilderness this thing is the ultimate survival tool because uh, the sheath also plays a crucial part in that too the sheath has a sharpening stone here and a bit of flint for starting fire so another Nepalese friend of mine from college my friend Kenjok who coincidentally, my friend Wong, who gave me this knife, they're both brothers. 
Ken Jock and I talked a lot about um, warriors and martial arts and things like that and fitness. We, that's a that, that's some uh, common ground we both shared. Now uh, his their their family doesn't really have any connections to Gurkhas. However, they do know quite a bit. Um, Ken told me that in traditional Nepalese culture, uh, you, a boy is considered a real man when he learns how to use a cookery knife. And based on the variety of uses it has aside from combat, <clears throat> I could totally see that. I mean, you could um, use the tip of the blade to um, a carve out uh, steaks and stuff out of sticks and uh, cut vines and make them into crude twine and oh various things like that even the blunt side of the of the knife it's very um, very heavy and would uh, make an excellent hammer or something like that okay and now as a combat knife though that is what the kukri is uh, more known for and um, and just a bit of uh, uh, history with the Gurkhas the Gurkhas are a as uh, are a, are an elite military force that actually fights for uh, England. They're considered an extended military family of um, of uh, England's military, and that's been the case since the um, early nineteenth century. I want to say it all st started with uh, I think uh, the Nepal War of eighteen twelve. I believe it was. And um, as all you his history buffs know out there, you know, um, back then England was really, uh, had a really powerful military expanding her uh, global empire in places uh, like Southeast Asia and the Middle East Asia. And um, so, of course, they got a real, really big reputation on um, around the globe. And of course, any countries that were going to be uh, invaded or colonized by uh, England, they already knew what they were capable of and really didn't think to oppose them. They didn't dare oppose the might of uh, the United Kingdom. However, Nepal, and geographically, Nepal is a very small country tucked away in the Himalaya Mountains between um, India and China. And on top of that, too, the people are generally very kind-natured, very passive, gentle people. So, of course, the United Kingdom thought they'd be able to conquer and colonize Nepal with ease. They were not expecting what happened. And what happened was, um, these, uh, the Nepalese warriors, who would later become <clears throat> the first Gurkhas fighting for England, uh, I believe they were called something like uh, Gorkas at the time. Uh, they fought and fought and fought, and they did not make it easy for the, the British military. And this was their primary weapon. I mean, uh, England, they had top quality, state of the art guns and um, um, heavy artillery and all those uh, newer weapons at the time this this seemed like something um, very crude and rudimentary compared to one of those um high-end old um, British flintlocks and uh, weapons like that uh, so anyway despite this extreme um, moment of conflict the United Kingdom expressed a lot of, um, oh, how should I say, um, they were, ah, yeah, they were very impressed with the sheer willpower of the Nepalese people, and, um, despite the extremely brutal and, um, I guess you could say gory, um, close-range battles and the things that the, um, that the Gorkas would do surgically with their cookeries to their British soldiers outside of the battlefield, they apparently expressed a mutual respect for uh, the United Kingdom. So yeah, England, I believe they 
did end up um, colonizing Nepal. I would think so, seeing as how Nepal has a lot of English influences. But um, after uh, after that conflict, though, the United Kingdom they were so impressed and uh, so moved emotionally by the Nepalese people's struggle and their willpower and their sheer strength on the battlefield that they sent a diplomat there and um, and that's when the first Gurkha regiments were formed. Of course they're not considered like a mercenaries or anything of that lowly nature. They are of course considered a uh, part, like I said, an extended uh, arm of the British military. So um, and there are a lot of very very uh, skin tingling stories about um, with the uh, Gurkhas and their cookery. I should also note that the cookery is, of course, the staple weapon of the Gurkhas. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. It's not that different from the um, the Japanese style katana swords and that the uh, that armed the samurai for uh, throughout history in Japan and and of course um, like uh, the forty five Colt single action armies that armed. Uh, uh, the cowboys and lawmen of the old American West. Um, I and that that uh, leads me to another thing too: the uh, the origin of the cookery. Uh, as far as I know, I'm not exactly sure if the design was uh, indigenous to Nepal or imported. I know if you look around other regions of the world, there were sim very very similar looking. Um, types of blade weapons like uh, even even so far as the one uh, ancient um, Spartan swords and there are even some exotic uh, swords in uh, India and stuff but um the modern kukri one that I have here surprisingly this type of design is not that old um, of course I'm sure they like I said uh, uh, don't I'm not too keen on the origins of the weapon, but I'm sure they've been using uh, blade weapons with uh, similar designs to these for you know since ancient times. But anyway, the modern design of the cookery I believe is not that old. Um, it started in the 16th century, I believe, and has outfitted uh, the Nepalese people not just as a weapon or military side or anything like that, but of course as a handy multi-purpose tool as well. But um, and uh, but no, I I think I'll uh, go on about some of the those the extremely fascinating uh, horror stories I guess you could say about uh, the Gurkhas fighting spirit and how they use their cookery to express their dominance on the battlefield. So, like I said, they were a long-standing ally for England for. Mm, almost 200 years now it seems um, so of course they were any major global conflict that England was in Nepal took part in which is very surprising because not a lot of people know that in World War one what um, some Gurkha uh, forces would do is um, they cross enemy lines uh, go into a German trench and in those uh, German machine gunner foxholes I believe some of those foxholes, I think they'd have just like uh, two to a f two soldiers to a foxhole, and when at night, when one of them would be asleep and getting some rest, and the other would be on patrol, what uh, what what a Gurkha would do is uh, they'd slip into that foxhole and just butcher the hell out of um out of the out of the guard that was on patrol while leaving his sleeping comrade alive and unscathed, alive and unscathed, so that when uh, he woke up and saw his um saw his mutilated comrade in pieces all all over the foxhole that of course would cause a tremendous amount of uh, psychological terror down enemy lines and that's one thing the Gurkhas were good at they were good at scaring their enemies they it's 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 I guess it's kind of funny in a, in a dark twisted sort of way how how ingenious those Gurkhas were at um, expressing their dominance on the battlefield I mean um, and that's one thing that yeah, they did. They just teased their enemies. Another thing, another interesting story too. In uh, stories uh, you hear about, like in uh, World War Two in the Pacific, 
what they do is when they cross Japanese enemy lines is that they'd cut the boot laces off the sentries without killing them, and that was just for a sport. <laughs> They took pride in their stealth too. They were very, very efficient soldiers. So, um, oh yeah, and of course, you know, uh, from what I understand, Gurkhas, they're, they're not too different from, you know, any other modern uh, spec ops type uh, military force. I mean, they have all the special training, all the special equipment. They use all the, in, in this day and age, they use all the standard equipment of um, the, Brit the British military, you know, um, L85A2, standard assault rifle, the L86 light support weapon, Browning high power as a sidearm. But, um, no, ever since though that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that the Gurkhas have fought for England, they've always preferred their, um, their cookeries over the over uh, the British weapons that were supplied to them. So I think that's really interesting. <laughs> oh, uh, what else? Well, yeah, like I said, the Gurkhas were just an extremely powerful fighting force. I mean, once you think about it, they're just as badass as Spetsnaz or the Navy SEALs or any of those guys out there. Oh, and another thing too, I mentioned earlier, Nepalese people are generally very passive, very gentle natured people, and, um, and honestly, you know, you can see, you, you could definitely see that if you were to go to Nepal. I mean, it's a very, very beautiful country. Uh, it, it's, um, it's just beauty come to life, personified from what I've seen in photos and uh, footage and stuff. And the people, they're, they're from the people I've met, the Nepalese people that I've met, and uh, of course from everything that I hear. They are just the sweetest, gentlest people ever. You, you think you think uh, you know um, they were extremely neutral and just you know wouldn't take to th th that they'd uh, be like victims of a of a country's expand of another country's expanding empire. But um, and another thing too is that uh, Nepal has didn't even uh, hasn't even been to war with another country directly. That is for over a hundred years. However, though, you know, that's not really the, much of the case when it comes to being the small, gentle, passive country that can be bullied, because, like I said, they are very strong, and they have those Gurkhas to prove it. And the Kukri, that is, that still remains their supreme and dominant uh, staple weapon. Now, um, oh, what else? I heard that uh, traditionally a Gurkha is... Uh, train to hand make their cookery and I can tell you all right now that this one is a handmade uh, cookery it's not one of those cheap knockoffs like a $14 knockoff that you find in those uh, knife catalogs or uh, cheaper than dirt magazines or anything like that uh, oh uh, and uh, yeah that, that's just another thing too these are extremely high quality knives which is one of, which is another reason why they are my favorite uh, melee weapon and I guess another thing I'd like to talk about now is just on why these things are so powerful because they are extremely powerful weapons the Gurkhas would use these things like I said to dom to show their dominance on the battlefield and just the sheer power a knife can do it's just as great as any axe or sword or machete I mean just the dynamics of the blade the way it's designed you, you see how it uh, curves forward and like I said, it is a heavy knife. Uh, a lot of that bl uh, that weighs in the front of the blade. So you have the design and the weight of the blade it really helps to maintain momentum when you come down and um, perform like a a slashing move. And these these uh, weapons are quite capable of a uh, of lopping off a human limb uh, with a strong arm and a well placed blow. Um, as a matter of fact, and when um, when the United Kingdom uh, first tried to attempted to colonize Nepal and uh, started uh, the, that that little war with Nepal back in 1812, that's one that's a tactic that the Gurkhas, the, or no Gorkhas as they were called at the time, but they do a lot. They uh, uh, they uh, used uh, their stealth tactics, uh, snuck around trees, guerrilla warfare type of basic guerrilla warfare tactics, and uh, you know they'd uh, come up and surprise patrolling uh, British officers and. Uh, when in so well, normally take off a, a, an arm or a leg or possibly a head. Um, oh, another interesting to mention too 
a more recent conflict that um, the Gurkhas were involved in, uh, the Falkland Islands uh, conflict of the oh, 80s, I think it was. Yeah, the Falkland Islands War, when uh, the uh, Brits went up against the Argentinians. I heard there was an instance where the British military were going to call in a Gurkha regime. And, like I said, the Gurkhas are notorious when a country is up against England this day and age. And so um, the Argentinians, they decided they didn't want to figure out whether the uh, in those infamous Gurkha stories were um, true or false. So, uh, you know, they fled. That Just, just hearing of that they'd um, have some Gurkhas come in and fight it, go up against them. That was enough to deter them from uh, taking the conflict any farther. Oh, let me see now. Um, I'm sure there are some other things I wanted to talk about this knife, too. Uh, this one actually has kind of a bit of a crack going on around the hip. I don't exactly know how uh, that came to be. It probably might have been from when I transported this thing back home uh, from college at the end of semester. I'm not exactly sure though, but honestly, I really don't think it matters because this is, like I said, a high, extremely high quality, handmade a cookery knife, and I don't know, it's mostly more of a display piece than anything, and I actually think it adds a bit of <laughs> character to the to the knife. So, yeah. Uh, Gurkha Kukri, my favorite blade weapon. Thank you all so much for uh, taking the time to view. I will try and get some more gun videos up soon. I actually have a few shooting videos of my girlfriend that I have up. So, thank you all and uh, have a nice day. Volcanoes go boom. I'm signing out.